DFM, DFM rocks. Bula Minaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Yeah, I'm Naka Fiji. In this bulletin, Sodelpa members in squabble over party process. Privileges Committee to table its report today. And Ministry seeks assistance to protect Fiji waters. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nair. So Delpa leaders have opposed all claims that the party is not following its own constitution and that its annual general meeting in Savu Savu earlier this year was a farce. This comes after a legal challenge was filed against party president Rofi Lipe Tuisawau, Anare Chale, Andi Litieng Yonimbaravi and new general secretary Usaya Wangatai Rewa. Suva constituency president Wati Soni Nata along with the likes of former MP Mere Sami Soni and Sodelpa youth wing president Chope Koroisawau have filed this legal challenge saying the party is not following its own procedures. Ali Kimbia with the story. Rofilipe Tuisawau says the conflict between the party is something they have tried to resolve numerous times, hitting out at the Nata-led group, which has decided to mount a legal challenge. Yes, they, they, they were concerns, they have concerns about the, the process, but uh, as everybody there saw, it was uh, a transparent uh, process, but as we have explained that to them and uh, tried to request them to follow the processes with him through the uh, management board. In a statement last night, the group stated their lawyers will file for a notice of hearing appointment. However, Tuisawau says he has not received any documents to prove the legal challenge. The group says this has been done to strengthen party's accountability for its voters and supporters. The group claims that the Sodalpa election held in Savu Savu and subsequent actions thereafter are alleged to have been done in breach of not only the party constitution but also the Political Parties Act 2013 and the Constitution of Fiji. I haven't, been, uh, I haven't received any documents till now, so I need to wait for that and we assess the situation. So Delpa leader Sitiveni Rambuka refuting all claims by the descendant group saying all processes were followed. As far as we're concerned, it was a, a constitutional meeting. It was a, held in accordance with our constitution and uh, the, even the business committee meeting that uh, was held the night before, yes. This is the latest brick wall that the party has hit within its own circle. This latest action by Sodelpa members shows there seems to be a major cause for concern for the party as its own members are now trying to outdo each other, claiming that they have the best interest of the party at heart. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The Privileges Committee will present its report in Parliament this morning. Speaker of Parliament Ratui Peli Nailatekau yesterday allowed the committee's request for more time to continue with its deliberations over the privilege matter. The matter is the alleged breach of privilege by both the Prime Minister Voreng and Baini Marama and opposition MP Pio Tikonduandua. On Monday, Ratui Peli had informed Parliament that after considering all relevant materials under the standing order, there had been a breach of privilege by Mbaini Morama and Tikonduandua on August 9th. The matter relates to the alleged personal attack by Tikonduandua against the Prime Minister and also the altercation between the two. The report was due yesterday. However, Ratui Peli says the committee had asked for another day to finish their work. Debate on the report is expected to take place today. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Service launched its new logo in Suva yesterday, replacing the well-known Tambua to a more contemporary design that represents its future aspirations. The launch of the new logo coincides with the 20th anniversary of the FRCS since its establishment in 1999, with new goals and targets set for forthcoming years. FRCS Chief Executive Vishwanath Das says the institution has recorded massive growth for the past 20 years. We went from a billion dollar tax revenue to two, and now we are ready for the third billion dollar revenue outcome. Of course, the Fijian econo economy now stands at $11 billion as well. This occasion for the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service also marks a celebration of 20 years of service 
to the people of Fiji. The fisheries ministry needs more assistance in order to protect our waters and the marine resources they are running out of time. While presenting his ministerial statement in Parliament, Minister Simi Kurela Visao highlighted Fiji made a commitment in 2005 to protect and manage 30% of our waters by 2020, but this is yet to be achieved. The Fisheries Ministry says they have also undertaken stock assessment at 283 traditional fishing grounds in the past 17 years. To address this, Honourable Speaker, the Minister of Fisheries has been actively work, working with line government agencies and non-governmental partners to identify alternative options for large-scale MPAs and MMAs. For the last financial year, the Employment Ministry has not received any labor non-compliance issues from anyone working with foreign film production companies in Fiji. Employment Minister Parveen Kumar says his ministry has been reviewing and have implemented procedures and mechanisms for dealing with all types of labor-related complaints. Kumar says this also includes employers who engage local workers for film productions. He says to date, his ministry has worked with 70 foreign film companies through Film Fiji from January to August this year. The speaker there had meetings and continued discussion on employment contracts and employment-related matters through Film Fiji to ensure compliance to labor laws and better working conditions for all our workers. Food lovers will soon be able to use a new app which will allow them to order food and have it delivered. The Easy Eat app that will be introduced in November will also allow you to book a table at a restaurant. Founder Devesh Pratap says the new app will bring Fiji on par with the rest of the world in terms of food deliveries. He adds there will be no cash transaction involved as people can pay online using their debit and credit cards. Now this app gives you the opportunity to actually right the moment you order the food. So from the kitchen floor to your door, you can monitor where your food is or where your order is. We believe the app that we have is the first of its kind in the sense that apart from just delivery, we have got a pickup feature. You can actually go out and pick up your food. You can also book in your, uh, your table, reserve your table. Coming up, flying Fijians depart for Japan today and protests against Lotoka in VPL. Stay with us. And the Talita can never wrong on a radio Fiji one, Nando may be tea. Bula, Gonga in Nokimba, and the Talita Valle of Navarro on a radio Fiji one, and a domain. Navali. And then go Sanitar Quati, and the Talita Cavalle of Navarro on a radio Fiji one, and a sorry. Radio Fiji one, Nando may be tea. Welcome back. The Fiji Airways Flying Fijians will depart our shores today as they head to Japan for the Rugby World Cup. As the team wrapped up final preparations here at home, coach John McKee says the bo boys are focused and are ready for the tournament. He adds they will have some warm-up matches with Japanese clubs. McKee says this will help them work on specific areas, including their game plan. We're really on track. You know, we, we know we've still got a bit of work to do. You saw us um, introduce today something different in our training where we're doing short blocks um, very intensively, you know, really specific around our game plan and, and attack and defence and, and that worked very well for us today, not only for, for developing our game plan specifically for, for uh, our opening game. The Flying Fijians will play Australia in their opening match on the 21st of this month. Fiji Airways Ndrua Vice Captain Seru Pepeli Vulakrika says they did not expect the draw against uh, Brisbane City last weekend but are aiming for a win at home this weekend against the Western Force. He adds that clinical errors were still being made. Vulakrika says the boys have made personal assessments from last weekend's game and are working to improve before the home game this week. Meanwhile, former Melbourne Rebels player Kichune Ratu will feature for the Force this weekend. Ratu will play alongside former Samoan international Henry Stowers. The Ndrua will host the Western Force this Saturday at the ANZ Stadium at 3 p.m. Uh, when we have a leg like, so we need to hold the ball 
because uh, most of the time when we break a line, we just to offload things like that. So teams know that we are we are be playing offloads most of the time. So yeah, we're feeling on Fiji-born All Black winger Sevu Rees has been named to start against Tonga in their test match this weekend. The All Blacks will host Tonga at 2.35 p.m. this Saturday at the FMG Stadium in Waikato, Hamilton. After 15 seasons of tests, rugby for the Wallabies, Polatunao has announced his retirement from international rugby. The Lombasa and Rewa football teams have lodged a protest against Lotoka in the Vodafone Premier League. Lombasa and Rewa are protesting against Poor Sambainivalu, who is currently suspended by the Lotoka Football Association. Bainivalu featured in the VPL match against Rewa and Lambasa, where Lotoka won both matches. The two teams are disputing that Lotoka should have uh, not fielded Bainivalu as he was suspended. Fiji FA Chief Executive Muhammad Yusuf says they will have the hearing of the protest before the court's IDC next month. Rewa is second last on the points table with 11 points, fighting for survival in the premier competition, while Lambasa is fourth with 16 points hoping to secure a spot in the OFC Champions League. Now we're getting all the facts to assemble and uh, then the BOC will meet to decide uh, on this protest. Uh, all I can say at this moment, uh, this is in regard to Posa Benibalu on his eligibility to play for Lotoka in the last two VPL matches. Fiji women's under-19 football team captain Coleta Likuzuladula is honoured to be part of the team. Fiji will take on Vanuatu at 11 a.m. tomorrow in Cook Islands in their third pool match. Mostly fine conditions are forecast for the Fiji group apart from cloudy conditions in Suva and Savu Savu in the afternoon. And that is your FPC Morning News. Remember to join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. That's it from me for now. Have a good morning. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM, FM because it's hot. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Uh, and we listen to FM Sunta hai because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are listening to Mirchi FM. We are listening Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot.